Hey guys, in today's video I am going to work on an air layer off of this uh, pomegranate tree. Uh, my goal is to uh, raise the root level up a little bit uh, because these trees uh, are called twisted pomegranates. They twist as they age, as weird as it may seem. And um, by raising those roots, I kind of want to get the same root base that we have here. Uh, so that's going to be today's goal. Uh, let's get into it. So a little about this tree, uh, like I just mentioned, it came off the top of that other pomegranate uh, this previous year. Um, the layer took maybe two or three months to take. And um, my goal here with this tree is to raise it up out of the ground a little bit. Uh, we may layer off one of these sub trunks. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, I don't know that I want to keep all three of these. Uh, but this will be something we'll explore later. Uh, for today, I'm just going to work on uh, getting this mess of roots out of here, uh, getting rid of a lot of them, untangling them, and uh, getting it into a pot. Pomegranates are not extremely cold hardy. Um, you see them, I believe, more in Texas uh, than other places of the U.S. Uh, they also enjoy a little bit of a drier soil. Um, so what I'm doing here today is a little bit risky because of the time of season. Uh, but if you look at this soil, once I can get it out of here, I do have to remove uh, these wires. But once I get it out, it is—it was a very much a potting soil base. Uh, this is just what I did when I layered it. Um, so we need to get all this out and get into a more uh, well-draining mixture. And it will be a lot more happy. Uh, it does look great here. It, these roots grew in probably, uh, I would say, three weeks uh, after I transplanted it, or after I, I mean, I uh, removed the layer. Uh, so it did grow a, a ton, but at the same time, um, up against the the base of this tree, there is a fair amount of sphagnum moss. It's just going to rot, and this mixture I've noticed it around my other trees. It's basically potting soil. It is much too wet. Uh, for this tree for its long-term health. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of rake this out and um, then we'll see what kind of root base we have to work with. I hope that I'm able to, you know, uh, where the soil line is now, uh, lower that by half an inch or an inch. That would be great. I don't know if I will be able to or not uh, because these layers never take exactly uh, like I intend for them to. So it'll be a little bit of a guessing game. There's going to be a lot of uh, pulling and, and yanking because I'm sure that these roots, um, the way that they, they you know, took over this pot, I'm sure that when uh, it was still on the tree in the layer, I'm sure that those roots were very, very much circled around the small pot that it was in. Uh, so I'm going to have to fight with that. But we will get there. Using both the tweezers and the root fork uh, to comb these roots out, uh, I am going to kind of pan away and uh, go ahead and wash this off as best I can. I'm probably going to do this several times. There's a lot of root mass, a lot of dirt, and there's just a lot going on in this tree. So uh, in the interest of time, I am going to skip through uh, several uh, less important steps. Uh, also, <laughs> I'll go ahead and apologize uh, for the camera angle. Uh, obviously I'm pretty new to this and my left arm likes to be in the shot a lot so uh, I apologize for that so we've washed off the roots here um, a little bit you can see we just have an absolute mat of roots um, they're not all feeder roots they're all a little thick uh, this may be the kind of style uh, of pomegranates as far as how they root it looks a lot to me like uh, an azalea if you've ever bare rooted one which you shouldn't uh, I know that from experience but they do tend to look a lot like uh, these roots and we're going to go ahead and try to untangle some of these, cut some of them back, and uh, get an idea, a little closer look at the base.
so we've removed a lot of the lower root mass that we're not going to need we want to try to get as many of these roots uh, on the same plane as we can uh, one thing that is going to be uh, different to this tree from you know most of the other trees and most of the other techniques uh, I'm not actually looking for an extremely radial root base what we really want is uh, that th these trees tend to look gnarly uh, when they get old and I think that a little bit of twisted roots or roots that aren't traditional uh, tend to actually play in this tree's favor so I am going to uh, not try so much to straighten these roots out and have them come out radially I am just really looking for the most interesting root line and the way that it looks uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to raise this tree up much out of the ground which means that I'll have to take an alternative approach and I will probably just let it grow for a year or two uh, these trees really change their character quickly and I think that I may have an entirely new tree in a couple of years with which you know to to kind of come with a different approach all I'm going to do now is trying to remove uh, any of these roots that look like they're you know multiples coming from the same spot uh, we're going to remove some of these feeder roots are so thick and they're kind of blocking my vision. This tree should have no problem jumping back from this. Um, and if it doesn't, it's a lesson learned. But uh, just trying to get uh, you know, into the trunk to see what I'm really working with. I still am not sure. I've been uh, at this point uh, picking and pulling at this tree for probably uh, 45 minutes or an hour. And I have just about reached my limit. I'm just going to see what we've got in here. Uh, you know, if we can cut some of the surface ones off and raise the trunk out of the ground a little bit, we will. If not, it'll go in the ground uh, or into a pot, I guess, just like it is. As I mentioned earlier, uh, pomegranate trees do like a little bit of a drier soil, uh, so the mix I'm going to use for it is uh, pretty much one to one to one, uh, akadama, pumice, and lava. I did add a little bit of cedar bark in there, um, just because it doesn't hurt. Um, I'll still fertilize this plenty, um, and it, but it'll help it with a little bit of water retention. It should be a very, very free draining mix though, and the tree should love it. just going to add a layer uh, to the bottom of the pot first we uh, do not really want the tree to be uh, sitting too low in this pot I would have just put it back into a regular pot uh, but this was a little shallower and I thought it may help uh, you know the next time we go to work the roots on this since um, I guess pretty much by design it is going to be a mess as you can see these roots are pretty pretty bad uh, but hopefully they they turn into something interesting um, as you can see that's uh, the bottom of the uh, the layer where I hoped the roots would grow uh, they elected to sprout a little bit higher uh, so we'll probably remove that in the future but for right now it's not a concern we're in a you know a three and a half inch deep pot so we really don't have to worry about it uh, when you're potting a tree uh, there is usually that open empty spot under the trunk uh, you want to make a small mound of soil uh, to place the tree on top of uh, and this kinda uh, keeps you from having a, an empty vacuum or an open space there uh, when you have too much oxygen like that uh, it can be bad for roots um, there, there, there's a mix there, there there's a balance so uh, anyway that's a good idea um, to kind of get your tree started 
Uh, I'm going to use, I picked a, a very thin wire to try to wire this tree in. Uh, it turns out it was not the best choice, but it was the first one that I saw and I will never use it for anything else. So uh, this is not the most secure um, setup, as you can tell. Once you have the, the tree uh, wired into your pot, uh, anytime you do a lot of root reduction, it is kind of important to stabilize it at least somewhat while the new roots uh, that grow uh, have time to establish themselves without being damaged you know, by the tree swaying in the wind or anything like that. Uh, I didn't do a great job of wiring this pot into this tree. I don't think it should be a concern, um, but we're still, you know, there's definitely room to improve on that. Uh, but anyway, once we have it, uh, into the pot we're going to add soil all the way around and when we do uh, we'll then use chopsticks uh, to kind of uh, I don't know uh, make the soil settle a little bit you're going to get rid of any of those pockets we were talking about earlier and this is the same thing that if you were to put this soil in without um, without moving it like this with the chopsticks agitating it uh, you would still have um, the soil settle and this just kind of has that happen beforehand so that you don't pot the tree, uh, set it on your bench, water it, and then uh, you know a week later you have roots exposed because uh, the soil settled as, as it was rained on or watered with a sprinkler or you know whatever like that. So once we have uh, the tree pretty much fully potted, we're just going to go around it again with some chopsticks. Just make sure that we uh, have the soil pretty much uh, solid in there as far as air pockets and things like that. We want to get rid of those, especially with the roots like these that are so irregular. Uh, there are going to be a lot of little pockets where air can be trapped. So it's important to go through several times and make sure that you do kind of uh, get everything in there as good as you can. Uh, but after this, all that's left to do is to water the pot. Um, you want to uh, have a hose or a sprinkler or whatever and you want to run water uh, through this until any water that comes through the bottom is clear. Uh, whenever you sift your soil some people will also uh, wet it then to try and get rid of any extra little dust. Uh, I did not so it's important that you go ahead and do this now uh, and it's just because those tiny tiny particles could um, contribute to you know drainage issues. Uh, so it's good to kind of go ahead and get all that kind of stuff out of the way in front so that you don't have to worry about it in the future. Once it goes on your bench, it should be okay for the foreseeable future. Uh, I do appreciate everyone watching my videos. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other content, I do have a lot of uh, higher quality trees that I am just saving for spring. Um, I'm okay working you know, these uh, at this point of the year, but any of the other ones that are a little uh, nicer trees, I do want to wait until the proper season to work them. Uh, but again, if you have any any uh, comments or suggestions uh, for content or, or things I can do differently, I'd be happy to hear them.